for joining. Um, and I was going to start off with the Grunfeld tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, um, sounds good. Um, let's take a look at that. Um, I'm just going to open up an analysis board. Thank you very much for joining. Yeah, no worries. No, welcome, uh, welcome, Amet. Um, you uh, are. I don't think you're playing. I don't think I have a game for you tonight. But uh, uh, we can take a look at the Grunfeld, and hopefully this will be uh, this will be instructive. Um, so yeah, uh, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3, and uh, and here I guess I would say, um, uh, you know, basically, um, uh, you know, this is a. Uh, this is the Queen's Gambit declined, um, three knights variation, and, uh, yeah, it looks, I mean, basically, I, I was interested in going into some Grunfeld theory, but I, I figured I would go into the standard Queen's Gambit decline to show some differences. Um, you know, basically, the Grunfeld involves the knight taking on d5. Um, you know, this is sort of done out of necessity and sort of done out of, um, you know, just, just the way that that opening is normally played, but, like, here, you know, uh, if the pawn takes, uh, d5, you would take with the pawn. So I guess that implies that, um, you know, in the standard, um, in the standard Queen's Gambit, uh, and maybe this is, you know, maybe this is obvious, but if pawn takes d5, knight takes d5, e4, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, bishop g7, in this particular case, um, this, uh, uh, basically, you know, this idea would be to, um, uh, uh, you know, basically, um, uh, move the knight to d5 and then pawn take knight takes c3 pawn takes c3 um and yeah white has a white has a huge center um uh but yeah uh you know basically here um you know white gets center control and then black gets better peace play um black uh, black attacks with c5 and uh and then um uh there ends up being basically you know a, kind of a struggle uh, where black is attacking uh on the uh on the queen side and uh uh white is basically attacking on the um uh and white white is basically attacking using the center uh there's definitely some breaks in the grunfeld where you get d5 uh e5 uh and basically these you know after c5 which is the normal move so say here um you know bishop to c4 here the move is c5 uh, this is the main line um, and here, you know, uh, in the long in the long run, uh, d5 can play be played, e5 can be played, and pressure can be applied on uh, you know the the d6 pawn. What if d takes c5? Well, in this case, um, uh, you know, early uh, bishop takes c3. Um, this sacrifices a uh, you know this sacrifices basically a pawn uh, and wins, but wins in exchange for uh, for black. I guess it just wins in exchange. Um, here, bishop to d2, bishop takes, queen takes, uh, and uh, and um, white basically has control of uh, you know the center here, uh, or black black has control of the center here. Um, it's a material advantage, and uh, and black is okay. Um, hey, uh, uh, yeah, not much. Um, I don't know. I'm having a weird day. Uh, <laughs> I had something that reminded me so much of uh, my old job, and I was just like, "Screw that!" I, uh, but sorry, <laughs> sorry to. Uh, uh, I'm having a weird day, um, uh, and uh, I have to think about it. Um, no, no, I'm here. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, no. I, it's funny. I worked in finance for a number of years in New York, and uh, you know. Um, it really made me think. It really made me think. I feel like I've gone soft, you know. To be completely honest, uh, I guess I must be. Uh, I must really be um, out of practice or something. Anyways, uh, <laughs> thinking about that. Uh, but um, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just reminiscent of uh, of something that I don't do anymore. Um, so, anyways, uh, I. Uh, I I made a decision that I think I'm gonna make differently, um, but uh, but I tie it very much to uh, to having gone soft. So I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit. Anyways, not a uh, <laughs> uh, I this is a free chess lesson stream and uh, we'll keep it uh, we'll keep it that. Um, but uh, but yeah, having a weird day. Um, anyways, uh, g6, knight c3, d5, 
pawn takes, knight takes, e4, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, pawn g7. And, uh, and basically here, um, uh, you know, I think um, uh, this is sort of better for black. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very good, efficient response for black. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, knight f3, bishop c4, c5, and, uh, and basically black will place uh, pressure on, um, uh, you know, the center here. Uh, here I think bishop to c4 is probably the best strategy. Uh, let's take a look at the opening book. Um, knight f3, bishop c4, bishop e3, uh, and, uh, and then c5, c5 is the response. Um, but, uh, but here, um, I guess I would say uh, knight to f3, you know, you see frequently. Uh, bishop c4 I think of as the main line, but I guess this is the second most common. Um, c5 here, and, uh, and you're basically in the main line Grunfeld. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just funny. It's funny. It cracks me up. Um, uh, sort of, to be completely honest, sort of the type of thing that I left finance to avoid, but um, still, uh, uh, man, I just got to think about that one. Um, I guess, you know, life just sucks in th at the end of the day. Uh, but, uh, 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 but I'm trying to run this, uh, I'm trying to run this, uh, uh, chess lesson, so I'll just stop, get it, get it, uh, get it off this, uh, yeah. Some days, man, some days. Um, anyways, uh, so C5 puts pressure on D4, um, you know, if the D4 is moved, uh, uh, and if D4 gets moved, then, uh, then Bishop takes C3. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, I don't know. Here I would say probably knight to e2. Uh, this, uh, this sort of just continues on. Um, castles here, uh, knight c6 was also playable. Castles, knight c6. And, uh, and basically here I would take a look at, uh, uh, pawn takes, um, you know, I, I guess I would take a look here with the, with the pin gone. Pawn takes c5 has a, has more appeal for um, for black. I usually see bishop e3 strength, uh, strengthening the center here. Um, and here I play knight a5. Uh, knight a5, bishop d3, c4. Uh, you know, I've never really had any issues with this. Uh, basically, um, this ends up, uh, uh, you know, placing pressure on um, uh, the center. Um, but, or basically this ends up putting pressure on, on this flank. Uh, white has a better center here. And, uh, and anyways, um, I think, uh, uh, ideas like b5, uh, could be helpful, a6 could be helpful, and, uh, and bishop to g4 could be helpful. Um, but, anyways, uh, yeah, I guess black, uh, you know, black basically just has a general advancement here, uh, on the queen side. Um, Spassky variation. I'm sure, I wonder if this is a, um, a fisher Spassky thing. No, no, I mean, not that, not really, but it's just, uh, it's just, um, kind of crazy when, uh, uh, yeah, anyways, whatever. Um, uh, queen a4, uh, I'd say castles here, probably, um, but, uh, but knight e2, uh, seems to provide a pretty good response for white. Um, other lines, uh, you know, I think one important, uh, line in the Grunfeld is, uh, is this anti-Grunfeld line, um, F3. Uh, here, D5, pawn takes, knight takes, E4. Uh, knight goes to B6 here. Um, basically, you know, this ends up providing a lot of benefits for white. Uh, in terms of eval, it's still, you know, roughly about the same. Um, but, uh, but this, um, you know, basically having this pawn on F3 as opposed to having this pawn on C3, uh, I think basically ends up uh, providing more of a solid center for white. Um, the f3 is compromised because uh, this knight um, uh, is uh, uh, basically this this knight um, uh, is blocked from its um, you know most primary square here. But bishop g7, I think, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, what can you do? Um, but yeah, I'd look at I'd look at bishop uh, knight b6 and then uh, and then knight c3, um, bishop g7 and bishop b3, castles queen d2, and uh, and knight c6. Um, uh, castles queen d6 knight b5 queen d7, uh, and you're basically in a situation. Uh, it's a little bit unusual to see um, to see uh, white castling queenside in any kind of Grunfeld opening, 
Um, but uh, but here, yeah, I, I guess I would say um, uh, this um, uh, you know this general line is uh, you know better to uh, it's better to um, take a look at uh, threats of knight takes d4 as opposed to uh, as opposed to castle and queenside. Um, knight b5 knight b4 is a, is a move that um, black could use to try to advance this attack. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, Thinking maybe a five knight b four, um, and then uh, and then ultimately uh, you know black will have a real reasonably good attack on the queen side. Let's see here it's about equal. Uh, I think that's probably about right. Um, you know this white development is weak on the king side. I think you can play like a six rook d eight, uh, and then um, uh, threats on d four. Uh, but uh, yeah, in general, I guess I would say. Um, uh, this you know this ends up playing out pretty strong for uh, for white against black, uh, or sorry the, again black against white. Uh, basically you know this um, uh, you don't think a thirteen hundred can play this? Maybe um, uh, it's complicated. Uh, I guess I would say here you know uh, the Grenfell leads to a few different lines. Um, here you know we have a few different options. Uh, knight f3 is a Grunfeld without knight c3. Here d5 is no longer the most popular. You usually play bishop g7, wait for knight c3 on the next move. Um, uh, here g3, bishop g7, and then um, uh, d5 is coming. Uh, knight c3, d5, uh, knight f3, castles, c takes, knight takes, bishop g2, and either knight, c knight takes c3, I'd probably play c6 here. Uh, you can also sort of transpose it by playing c5. Um, castles, knight takes c3, b takes c3, knight c6, and uh, and basically, um, you know, this uh, this castling or basically this this opening situation uh, ends up being better for uh, for white against black. Uh, you know, this this offers less opportunity. I think. I mean, basically, uh, you know, you're playing something along the lines of like bishop e6, bishop c4 potentially. Um, uh, I, I think of bishop g2 as a line that's, le uh, I guess, less challenging to black, um, but overall relatively close to equality. Um, so, g6, knight c3, d5, pawn takes, knight takes e4, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, and overall uh, this ends up being uh, better for um, uh, better for black. Uh, you know, or basically better for black, or better for uh, for black relative to some um, some d4 openings. Uh, this challenges the white uh, side uh, more effectively. Um, so I think uh, I think bishop g7, c5 is probably the way to go, and uh, and c5 is a good response after bishop g7. Bishop g7 pushing c5 uh, is um, uh, I think better for black. Uh, bishop c4, castles. Um, either knight to c6 or c5, but this is basically well explored theory. Knight e2, c5, castles, knight c6, bishop e3, queen c7. And now, you know, I think I think black basically is just going to try to put pressure on the c3 pawn, going to put pressure on the c4 bishop, and uh, and then moves like e6 can be played. Um, knight a5 here probably is the best idea for black, um, but. Uh, uh, there's a few different ways forward, and, and white has the initiative, but overall, uh, you know, this, this provides a challenging um, play on the center for black. Um, basically, in situations where, um, you know, very symmetrical Queen's Gambit decline type games, uh, black doesn't really have much chance. I mean, his goals are basically to play solidly and maneuver into a queenside win. Uh, here, you know, there's a lot of asymmetry, a lot of chances. D takes c5 here, yeah. Uh, this basically is, you know, I think this is pretty good. Uh, knight e5 can be played. Maybe the bishop plays to b3, um, and uh, and probably e6 or bishop to d7 uh, could be good for black. But um, but I would look at like knight to g4. Uh, this looks strong. This puts some threats on the board, and uh, maybe bishop f4 here. I guess uh, bishop f4, queen takes c5. But but let's go back. This is a situation in which um, uh, pawn takes c5 begins to become acceptable. Uh, overall, I think you know moves like knight to e5, knight to a5 um, uh, are probably the best ideas for black. Um, but, anyways, uh, I you know I think black has created a situation with asymmetry and a lot of chances, and that's sort of what you're going for in the Grunfeld. Um, we're just sort of scratching the surface here, but uh, but this is an example of a few mainline Grunfelds. Uh, and a knight and an F3 Grenfeld. 
Um, you, you, as black, you play them uh, them pretty similarly. Uh, you play the knight takes d5, bishop g7, c5, and then um, uh, you know takes c3 in this case. But if the c uh, uh, but if the c3 pawn is defended, then don't take it, obviously. Um, but uh, but yeah, overall, um, I think uh, I think black is basically uh, you know I think black is basically okay. Uh, Black's okay. He's created a situation that doesn't resemble the general, um, uh, you know, D4, closed D4 openings that White was hoping for. Uh, I think overall it's a good position. Um, so yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the next. The first game up is Jack Silver, so let's do that one. Okay, uh, so Jack Silver's game. Uh, Jack Silver is uh, is playing this, and uh, yeah, e5, c5. Uh, this you know this is a line in um, in the French. Uh, basically, the the c it's basically a way that the Karo Khan can transpose into the French. Um, this is a very common opening. Lots well known theory. Um, I'm surprised that d takes c5 is the most common here though. Uh, you know, basically in the French, one of the, I, I would not play d takes c5 here. I would play c3. Um, you know, as I've said a few times on the stream, this d4, e5, um, uh, you know, this d4, e5 uh, uh, structure is the one that's the most helpful for white. Um, and here, you know, uh, basically on pawn takes d4, pawn takes d4, uh, you know, white uh, has eliminated one of the key issues in his position in the French. Um, here, like knight f3, bishop f4, bishop e2, uh, th these are the types of moves that I think, um, uh, you know, are the most beneficial for white. Uh, here, you know, I, I think d takes c5 will lead to uh, this kind of compromised French structure uh, where, uh, where both the e5 pawn is weak and the c5 pawn is weak. Uh, and you basically have to um, uh, try to hold on to both of them. Uh, hard to do. Um, c3, f4, uh, pawn takes. And then um, uh, here, king takes and basically white's in, uh, white's in pretty good shape. Um, or sorry, black's in pretty good shape. Uh, the issues in terms of this opening, um, I, I like the way that this is playing out for white. I'm surprised that the eval is so not generous. Uh, I guess knight to b4 is kind of a problem uh, with rook to c2. Um, but uh, a3, I think, is probably the best play. Uh, e6 is sort of, um, I don't know. I feel like this is somewhat passive. I would have played knight to b4. Uh, but uh, but yeah, sorry. I just realized we're playing from Black's perspective. Uh, this is uh, this is makes sense. Um, uh, so C3 as opposed to um, uh, as opposed to pawn takes C5, I think is better for White. Um, but now basically Black is playing some form of the Karo Khan. Uh, you know, different than the French because the bishop is on F5. Um, I think there's tactical threats along the lines of like Knight to B4. Um, I don't know if you play those immediately. You might want to play e6, bishop e7, uh, knight to h6. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, that would be my suggestion here. Uh, h6, or sorry, e6, bishop e4, bishop e2, and then, um, uh, you know, black has sort of a, almost a one-pawn advantage here. Bishop e4, and uh, here, um, you know, white is, white is sort of neutralized black's advantage. Uh, where was the error here? Um, knight b4, I guess, uh, no longer offers much. Uh, basically, knight b4 is sort of weak when, um, uh, you know, knight b4 is basically sort of weak when uh, you um, uh, are aiming to, um, you know, create threats all along the c file. Uh, it's strong when the king is on um, e1 and you can play knight c2 forking, but uh, but here, you know, I don't really think you've got much. Um, maybe uh, maybe ar c8. Um, but overall, uh, I think, you know, probably knight to b4 is a reasonable strategy. Uh, it's a reasonable strategy, but not as strong uh, as, a, as if the king was still on e1. Here the rook's going to move to e1, or c1, and uh, knight f2 doesn't carry much weight. Uh, it's, you know, uh, basically threatening, uh, th threatening the rook and the bishop on e3. Um, and uh, basically... Um, yeah, black ends up winning uh, winning tactically here. 
so in terms of improvements for black, um, you know, where, where would I have changed this game if I was, uh, if I was playing black here? Uh, the ideas, I guess I would say, um, uh, c5, f4, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen b6, b3. This all, this all makes sense to me. Um, you know, this pawn structure in the center is sort of weak. This d4 pawn is isolated. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, I guess I would play knight to b4 here and, uh, and basically be better as black. Uh, maybe e6. Um, but knight to b4 th seems to threaten uh, a fork of the king and the rook on, uh, on a1. So, um, yeah, knight b4 is probably, you know, is probably the best idea with the king still on e1. Uh, afterwards, uh, I think knight b4 is an error. I think basically, like here, you know, knight b4 doesn't really provide great attacking chances. Um, uh, it can be dealt with too easily, like just hrc1, rook hc1, uh, and rook uh, challenging it. Um, I'm sort of impressed by the eval shift here. I want to make sure that I fully understand this one. Um, I guess, you know, basically white needs to prevent knight to c2. Uh, you know, but, uh, bishop to d1 or knight to e1 is probably the most effective way to do it. The issue with a defended knight on c2 is it makes this, um, this rook open to a discovered check from the bishop on e4. Uh, so here, you know, knight c2, rook takes, rook takes, king e1, and, uh, I think basically black is fine. Uh, you know, black is, is winning material and, and up. Um, so, anyways, uh, I guess uh, I guess here, um, you know, what are the advantages? How, how does black improve? Uh, I'm surprised that the, the eval is so good here. Um, looking for a black misstep. I think queen b4 is probably not the right play. Um, I think, you know, you've basically created a situation where you can create a lot of pressure with knight to b4. Um, this forces uh, you know white to deal with your threat on c2. Maybe um, maybe here uh, knight to h knight to a3 uh, could be good, but um, but generally uh, I think black is uh, you know black is better. Um, yeah, knight to knight to b4 I think is the right idea. So yeah, so in terms of looking at this game, where are the improvements for black? Um, queen d2 uh, is probably an error. I think maybe um, the engine is suggesting king f2. That looks crazy. Uh, I don't know, maybe knight to d2. Um, but uh, but overall, yeah, queen to d2, I, I guess, makes sense. I guess bishop to d4 is completely, uh, or bishop to d2 is unplayable, so queen to um, d2 uh, is, uh, is probably the best idea. Here, you know, e6 um, might be, you know, the best idea for black. Uh, here, you know, you're waiting for the queen to take your queen, and then you can advance with check. Um, but... Here, I guess I would just say black is uh, black is reasonably solid, um, not much of an advantage, and uh, you know, I, I think maybe um, uh, knight to b4 is uh, a better way to go. Um, okay, so I think black's been pretty reasonable. Bishop f5, pawn takes, pawn takes, b3, queen b4, and uh, and here, you know what, um, you know what are white's moves like a3 preventing bishop b4. Or knight b4, uh, that makes sense. Um, rook to c1, I guess, maybe. Certainly by this fork, uh, things are going pretty badly for white. Uh, I guess a3 would have been an improvement. Um, but since uh, Jack was playing black, uh, maybe, I don't know, castles is probably slightly inefficient. Um, you could probably try knight to f5. Knight to f5 threatens this bishop, uh, and then potentially, you know, on the taking of the bishop, if you have the knight on b4, you could threaten with knight to c2. So, like, knight f5, uh, you know, rook hc1, uh, knight c2. And, uh, and then moving um, the, uh, you know, basically the bishop has to move, otherwise the fork's coming, knight takes e3, knight to c2, uh, and, uh, and basically black is, um, you know, black is looking pretty solid. Uh, so, 
you know, where do you advance here? Uh, I would play knight to b4. Um, I don't know. Knight to h6 is getting suggested. Probably wouldn't do that. Uh, e6 makes sense. Um, queen to b4, I think, is somewhat unchallenging. I think you want to play e6, bishop to b4. Uh, I know this isn't the engine line. The engine line is knight h6, but e6, um, you know, with the, followed up with uh, with bishop b4 and queen a5, uh, I think, you know, that might provide a better option for, for black. Um, bishop f5, pawn takes, pawn takes. Queen b6, b3, queen b4. Yeah, I mean, I guess e6 here and then bishop to b4. Uh, that works. Queen to b4 is uh, is just sort of a slow, slow moving move. I, you know, it, it's trading off here doesn't really make a lot of sense since you're the attacker. Uh, go with e6, bishop b4, and uh, and pressure on uh, on d2. Uh, that would probably be my best strategy. Um, uh, queen b4, queen takes, knight there. This, this overall, you know, looks like black is slightly better, has slightly better initiative, but I am sort of left wondering if there were, there were solid improvements for black. Um, e6, knight f3, bishop b4, bishop b2. Yep, this looks best for black, I think. Um, moves like bishop to... Uh, or on knight h4, I guess I would play um, uh, probably bishop to I don't know bishop to c3. Um, that's bishop to c3. You know, threatens to win this rook. Probably has pretty good chances of winning this rook. Uh, rook to c1, bishop b2, rook to d1 maybe, or rook to c5. Uh, you really can dislocate that rook with uh, with threats from the bishop. Um, I think bishop e2 is an error. Uh, probably wants to play... I mean, the engine is suggesting king f2. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, as we're sort of closing out... It's an interesting game. Uh, as we're sort of closing out on this analysis, I'm thinking about uh, what tangible ways to improve. Um, uh, pawn takes e4... Or d4 is a great tactic. I definitely want to give credit to this. This closes the game out. Um, but where would I have changed the game is black. Um... This all looks fine. Queen to b4 doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. I think you should. Uh, I think you should go with uh, better developing moves. Knights. The engine is suggesting knight a6. Um, e6 is uh, uh, e6, and then bishop to b4 probably makes a lot of sense. Um, but uh, yeah, um, here bishop takes, king takes, knight f2, uh, knight to b4, and, and black is you know uh, black is back to equality. Um, there is no reason to get uh, to get this position back to equality. Uh, I wouldn't have traded the queen. I would have continued to develop. Um, uh, ideas here, knight e7. Um, okay. And, uh, and here, you know, I don't know. I guess knight f5, but it's sort of tricky because, um, you know, moving... Uh, you know, you want to you want to maintain your development too. I guess castling doesn't directly help that much. It's probably better to just start attacking here, uh, knight to b4, um, threatening the c2 square. Uh, maybe you know, maybe you should play king to d7. Uh, I'm wondering if king to d7 is playable or whether bishop to b5 just sort of refutes that as a potential castling square. Pro probably is just better to castle. Um, so yeah, so I would take a look at queen b4. I think that's probably not what you want to do in the midst of an attack. Uh, you know, when you're attacking, you want to keep the pieces on the board. Um, and uh, here, I think um, this uh, this basically ends up pretty well for black. Uh, you know, if the game ends here and you play relatively conservative moves, black's up significant, uh, you know, significant compensation. Uh, bishop b4, bishop c3 looks good. Um, knight to c, knight to b4, threatening to go to b2 looks good. Uh, and uh, but straightforward development. Uh, if you can bring these pieces into the game to help solidify your attack, that seems like a good plan. Um, uh, white needs to do something to prevent knight c2, uh, and he doesn't do that. 
Uh, after knight e3, this rook is in trouble. Uh, rook a2, knight takes um, uh, knight takes e3, rook takes c8. Um, but I think basically black does a pretty good job of capitalizing on this. Uh, the, the position's bad for white, and uh, and black um, you know manages to exploit uh, the weaknesses in the position. Um, so bishop takes g4, knight b4. Knight c2, rook takes. Black's better. Um, the real chance uh, for... So so I don't think knight b4 was necessarily that great an idea. Um, I think probably uh, playing like rook to c8 is a better idea. Um, but uh, but um, anything to f uh, face off against... Um, uh, to face off against rook c1. Uh, you know, knight, uh, the knight to c2 is a great move and completely justified if you're actually getting knight c2 in. Uh, that, that justifies knight b4. But, uh, but white doesn't have to let this happen. He could play knight e1 here, and, uh, and basically um, this threat is no longer an effective one. Uh, White's showing a plus 0.5 here, and uh, and that's good. Um, so yeah, so I, I would steer away from knight b4. Uh, I recognize that that gave you a good advantage uh, in this game after knight c2, but there's no reason that white needed to allow that to happen. Um, I sort of like attacks involving a5, uh, a5 and a4. a5, a3, um, a4. Uh, this looks pretty good for white, but um, uh, you know, generally I think, I think um, after b4, uh, it's close to equality, but that's good for white considering that white was uh, white was down um, in terms of eval before. Uh, interesting game. Um, so yeah, so I guess I would say in terms of things to change around, uh, you know, it worked well for you. You won the game, which is great. Uh, queen b4, um, queen takes is probably not the right idea. Engine is suggesting knight h6. I would suggest e6 and bishop to b4 instead of trading off the queens. Uh, you're just starting an attack, so there's no reason to simplify. Um, it doesn't really make a, a ton of sense. Um, knight b4 here is also playable. Uh, it's difficult for white to respond to uh, to that forking threat on knight c2. Um, so yeah, so I wouldn't have done that. I would have played probably... I Actually, after looking at knight b4, I'm really tempted to play that. Um, I think that might... Uh, you know, I think that forces knight a3, which is a really awkward move. Um, so I would probably go with that. Um... Here, black's looking good. Um, this all sort of makes intuitive sense. And then here, I think knight b4 is just an overextension. Um, the, mo the most positional moves are things like a6, b5, um, or a5, a4. Uh, this knight to b4 move basically um, uh, leads to, you know, leads to overextension if white plays correctly. Uh, there's just no way to continue to run this attack. So I guess I would side against knight to b4. I think, um, you know, the attack ended up working great, so maybe you know your opponents better than I know your opponents, but um, a5, a4 uh, seems like a more drawn-out positional attack uh, that offers black better um, possibilities given best play. So I would steer away from, from I would steer away from knight to b4 too. I think it's just a little bit superficial. It worked great, but superficial uh, at this point in the game. Um, interesting game. Thank you for sending it, Jack. Uh, on to the next one. Um, this is a SWWI versus Hannah Dog. Um, uh, cool. Um, so, uh, this is interesting. Um, this is Alapin with immediate d5. I always think this is good, and I, I, um, because basically one of the pushes that black needs, one of the things that, um, the black needs in the Sicilian is, uh, is d5. Uh, you know, with, with d5 here, uh, I think, um, uh, with with d5 here, basically, I think black is, uh, you know, challenging. I, I think basically white black is almost close to equality. Um, this really steers things towards uh, towards black's center control. Uh, with e5, this is complete equality. Uh, this transposes into something that looks like the French with um, black moves ahead, uh, or Karakhan with black several moves ahead in terms of tempo. Uh, so bishop f5 here, and, and I think you're in an equal position. Um, pawn takes d5 is a little bit more complicated. Pawn takes d5 is going to give black center control um, in an asymmetrical position with the queen taking d5. Uh, ideas like, I don't know, knight a3, bishop c4, uh, and, uh, and I don't know, uh, basically, uh, it, this, this queen can't easily be challenged here. c4 is not really a great idea. Knight a3, bishop c4 is not really a great idea. So the queen's sort of left, uh, left just attacking in general in the center. Um, overall, this is good.
Uh, ideas are like knight f3, d4, knight a3. Uh, things like that for white, I think, are pretty good. Um, but uh, but yeah, that uh, with either of those, I think um, you know white is no worse than equal. Queen e2, uh, knight c6, pawn takes, knight c6, and uh, and basically um, uh, black is good. Uh, I guess I would say, you know, knight a3 is probably pretty strong uh, or, or pretty good for white, but black's development leads by enough that um, that white's going to be kind of struggling for equality. Um, uh, it's just a good way to play against the Sicilian Alapin, in my my opinion. Um, and after Queen E2, which is not the best move for White, the best moves for White are uh, the best move for White is Pawn takes D5, Pawn takes D5, Knight F3. Uh, then uh, then White is in a pretty good position. Um, I guess I would say Pawn Queen Pawn takes D5, Queen takes D5, and then maybe D4. Uh, but yeah, overall uh, overall good for White um, or good for Black after Queen E2. Uh, knight f3, knight f6, queen takes, knight takes d5, and and here you know white has an isolated queen pawn, and uh, you know um, maybe knight a3 is the best idea, uh, but this is this is worse for white. I mean basically you've given black uh, you know you've given black a better pawn structure, uh, three pawn islands versus two, and you've given black, um, uh, you know, potential to play knight c2, and you've given black a developmental advantage. So here, I guess I would say, you know, bishop to b5 is probably pretty good, um, knight a3. But uh, but yeah, um, uh, bishop c3, bishop d5, bishop d3. Overall, uh, black looks solid. Uh, that you know, white's going to try to make attempts with uh, with advancing his pieces here. Um, but uh, but yeah, overall, uh, I guess I would say this is about equal. Castles, rook d1, and uh, and here, you know, basically, um, uh, white has you know it's equalized. Uh, so this is actually a, a series of moves that goes pretty well for white. Um, you know, when you're looking at this situation, I think um, a5 is I guess a5 is an error. Um, maybe knight to e3 could be good. Um, but a5 is uh, is not the best. Um, I would continue on with normal development. Uh, a5, I guess the idea is to post knight b4, but that's not really particularly good either. I mean, you know, if you play knight b4, you know, there's going to be trading, and eventually um, uh, black's going to end up with doubled isolated pawns on the b file. Uh, so knight takes, pawn takes, bishop b5, and uh, overall uh, white sort of equalizes. Um, inefficiencies on a5 and inefficiencies on, uh, yeah, I guess, mostly just a5. Um, it was a good opportunity to continue to develop, and, uh, and black instead plays a5 for a, a speculative attack that isn't really that powerful. Um, King e6 evaluated as brilliant. That's pretty aggressive. That's a pretty aggressive interpretation. Uh, here, bishop takes e3. Okay. Uh, sorry, g5 is a missed win. Bishop e3 was better. Uh, interesting. So let's count this out. Uh, this makes sense. So bishop takes is obviously forced, right? Because um, anything besides king takes, anything besides bishop takes, and, uh, and the king's going to go to g5. Five and the king's going to go to e4, and uh, and basically, uh, you know, basically, basically, if the bishop moves here, the bishop's just going to take the b6 pawn uncompensated. So trading bishops is uh, is pretty important for uh, for um, black versus white here. Uh, here, um, I don't know, probably bishop d8. It looks like about equality, but where do I think that white should be improving? Uh, so, I like I really like um, this d5 response to the Sicilian Alapin. Uh, you know, if you're given the opportunity to play d5 in the Sicilian, uh, you probably should. Pawn takes d5, queen takes d5, and uh, and all of this I think ends up being pretty good for black. 
uh, knight takes d5, and maybe knight a3 here. Um, but overall, I think white's, you know, uh, playing from behind now. Uh, this, this development is, uh, is good for black. Um, queen takes, knight takes, knight a3, good. Uh, maybe bishop d2. But overall here, uh, you're pretty close to equality. I really want to try to isolate some errors, because these games seem pretty accurate to me. Um, yeah, this is a 94 to 93. I mean, it's, it's a good game. Um, where are their, uh, where are their changes? Uh, yeah, I mean, both sides are really playing pretty well, so it's, it's hard for me to pick out things to improve. Um, I don't know how White slip, let this slip away. I mean, basically, um, Sicilian Alapin is uh, is probably a pretty good opening for uh, for White, uh, or I mean, uh, Sicilian Alapin is is probably um, a pretty playable opening for White. Uh, so with moves like Queen D5, uh, the Sicilian Alapin is not as um, uh, you know is not as strong as uh, basically with Queen D5, um, Sicilian Alapin with Queen E2 is just not very good for White. Um, pawn takes d5, and, you know, this is a playable opening. Uh, queen takes d5, basically you're at, you know, eval of, like, plus 0.5. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'm thinking, like, d4 is good, knight f3 is good, um, but overall, uh, you know, white's gonna be, um, you know, white's gonna sort of be, be, uh, in, in relatively good shape. Um, there's no, uh, there's no developmental disadvantage. Queen e2, a non, uh, queen e2 is a non-developing move, uh, and it sort of blocks off this bishop's development and this potentially this knight's development. So black's already showing a big positive after queen e2. Pretty much anything is going to be good for black. Uh, you know, black now has this developmental advantage. This knight got out uh, while um, white was busy moving his queen. So ideas like d3 could be good. Um, queen c4... And, uh, and, but by this point, basically, this developmental advantage has gotten to the, uh, has gotten, um, white a solid lead. Or, sorry, black a solid lead. There's not much that, that white can really do. Uh, pawn takes, knight before, and, uh, yeah, here, uh, you know, basically white is, um, uh, white is just worse. I mean, you know, this pawn structure is much better for black. Um, black was able to turn his developmental advantage into an improvement in pawn structure. Um, with d4 here, knight takes d4 is better, uh, but if you just trade off the knights, you end up with an isolated queen pawn. Uh, white's pawn structure is worse, white's development is worse. Here it's more equalized, but white's pawn structure is still worse. Um, with knight e3, this traps the bishop uh, and wrecks black's pawn structure to make it symmetrical. Um, bishop to g7, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop to b5, and now we're pretty close to equality. Um, uh, white securing the symmetry uh, in the um, uh, in the pawn structure is, is a good idea. Um, so I don't know. Uh, maybe King F three here. But overall, I think uh, I think you know White's basically capitalizing with Bishop to E three here. Uh, he forces a trade. Um, or sorry, uh, earlier. Um, so on e5, uh, bishop e3 basically allows, uh, you know, white to force off this bishop. Uh, when the bishop takes e3, uh, king takes e3, king g5, and then um, king goes back and takes the pawn, and then ends up taking the b pawn and moving to a7 and, uh, and queening the pawn. Uh, so yeah, so solid. Solid makes sense, um, and, uh, you know, basically accurate play through the endgame. Um, the worst move, in my opinion, is probably this queen e2 move. I think you just can't do it in this opening. Um, it's not even on the list of potential uh, potential opening opportunities. Uh, pawn takes queen d5 and uh, and white is just sort of worse. Uh, this uh, this development is just better for black. Um, clean, good. Uh, black's up a solid uh, half a pawn. Um, I don't know if d4 was a good idea. I think d4 probably wasn't a good idea. Um, here, you know, you have your pawns covering all the the dark squares. I'd probably play like bishop to b5. I think this is the best idea for white. And uh, and with bishop to b5, um, you know, the pin, uh, the knight is pinned on c6, and uh, and white's getting straightforward development to black, uh, to uh, to match black's development. Um, so. Knight uh, e3 was a good tactic. 
So, so in terms of moves that I think uh, White could have improved upon, um, Queen E2 is definitely one of them. Uh, pawn takes D5 is objectively the best, um, the best opening move there. Um, and then I wouldn't have played D4. Uh, you know, you don't need to capture the center, you know, with a pawn here. Uh, trading your D pawn so that you get isolated, you end up with an isolated Queen's pawn is just not good for White. Uh, you should probably play Bishop B5 uh, with castling in mind. You could probably play Bishop to E2. Um, or, uh, or even knight to a3 looks kind of interesting. Um, but, uh, but something that develops as opposed to just, um, uh, you know, basically, it ends up basically harming your pawn structure. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes. White's pawn structure is worse. Um, in, a, in a game that's, you know, relatively symmetrical, uh, except for black having better, um, uh, better uh, minor pieces, uh, you should just try to improve your minor pieces, castle, and, uh, and you'll be in good shape. Bishop b5, I think, is the move. Um, so yeah, uh, on to the next game. Um, this one is Abdu009 versus Goxel, okay. Um, yeah, so, so the two moves in that last game, just so just for memory, are, are queen e2 uh, is not the correct move in that opening. Uh, it's not in the opening book. Um, you know, I understand it because you're waiting for pawn takes e4 and then queen takes e4, but it's just not, a, it's just not solid. It doesn't provide the development that you need. Um, the other, uh, the other idea, I guess I would say is, um, uh, is that D4 seems premature. Okay. D4, uh, knight C3, I think is not correct in, uh, you know, just, there are openings that go knight C3, but, um, but it's not a preferred move. Uh, it's well down the list. Um, the issue with this, uh, this knight C3, knight C6, I mean, it's interesting the black played symmetrically, is, uh, is one of the main things in the Queen's Gambit declined and, and the symmetrical uh, Queen's Pawn game is where you play C4. Uh, you need something to challenge a break uh, on, uh, on D5 with. Uh, I don't know whether that's E4, I don't know whether that's knight F3, but, um, but yeah, I guess I would say, um, you know, when you play knight C3, knight C6, uh, you're probably going for um, something, you know, you know, you're not exerting the appropriate amount of pressure on the d5 square. Uh, e4, knight takes, knight f5. Yeah, this is all pretty good for white, I think. Um, and, uh, and I think black's just better here. Uh, you know, um, uh, you should probably just... Uh, th so, so I would steer white away from knight to c3. Knight to c3 blocks in the c pawn, that's not good. Um, uh, e4, d takes e4, knight takes e4, uh, hangs the d4 pawn. Uh, hanging that pawn is not good either. Um, so e4 is not playable. Uh, you know, it has to be uh, ordered knight f3 and then um, and then e4. Uh, you know, this is why a break with c4 is often, you know, the preferred idea in the queen's gambit or queen's pawn games. Knight takes f5, um, bishop e3, and, uh, and here, you know, uh, black's uh, Black's showing a good position. I mean, you know, Black uh, didn't, uh, you know, basically end up ended up winning the D pawn for no compensation, and uh, and White's good. Um, Bishop to G five is an idea, and uh, this is pretty brutal. Um, this uh, this attack uh, evolved very quickly. Um, let's just take a look at the the miniature um, uh, here. Uh, White should not have hung the D four pawn. I think black's playing relatively reasonably. Uh, here I would play c6 and then prepare to move the knight to d7. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, both sides sort of mishandle their c-pawns here. Uh, on e4 you can play pawn takes d4, and then I would say queen takes d4 here. Uh, but you play f5 instead. Um, here you can play knight c3, but the d4 pawn is still hanging. So, you know, even though the eval is still positive, uh, white lost a pawn here. Uh, the response here is bishop to e5, but even then, you know, that's sort of, uh, I guess, I guess, you know, with bishop e5, either c, I would say c5 is probably the best move, but with a knight move like knight d8 or knight c, or knight d6 or knight c6, uh, you know, the queen takes on d8 and then the knight takes on d8, and the bishop is, uh, threatening on c7. Um, so, you know, what are the options? Uh, this, this gets pretty aggressive for for black uh you know were there better opportunities for for white here uh i don't know if there were that many uh you know it definitely didn't have to lead to mate but white's position is not good uh black has you know this outpost uh that's very solid this knight on d4 um you know you probably do have things like uh you know bishop e5 knight takes e2 something like that um but uh but bishop 
to g5 doesn't really solve any problems related to the knight on d4. Bishop e7, castles, knight g g3. Uh, and overall here, uh, you know, this is obviously a big error. Um, but, uh, you know, bishop g2 would work fine. Uh, the mate needs to be prevented. Bishop g2 does it does the job adequately. Uh, this f3 square is the key one that one where the white uh, or the black bishop delivers mate. Um, so uh, so here, um, yeah, bishop g2 sort of solves white's problems, but black is still winning by a lot. Um, white never should have hung the d4 pawn, uh, and uh, black I think does a reasonably good job of uh, of breaking through all this. So you know, realistic given given optimal play, these moves are probably too aggressive, um, but. I don't know. We we didn't get optimal play in this situation. So with knight f3, I think um, you know there's threats on the king and uh, and black's looking pretty sharp. Uh, nothing really to do. Uh, nothing really to do there. Um, so knight f3, I guess. Cool. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting miniature. Uh, I don't know whether you know what to to make out of that game exactly. Um, knight f knight c3 is not the right move and knight c6 is not the right move um uh e4 and hanging d4 causes white some problems um but here i think uh yeah knight f3 is uh, is probably the optimal play um yeah uh interesting um all right on to the next game uh that was a very interesting miniature cool uh now we have Pravila's game and a takes this game so let's go from let's uh, take a look at those um uh, Pravilo's game uh, is, um, I, I think Pravilo is playing white here, right? Uh, or maybe he's, or maybe he just sent this in on someone else's behalf. I'll, I'll just take it from white's perspective, um, unless he corrects me. Uh, all right. D4, knight f6, knight c3. Uh, already not jazzed about this move. I think this move is basically, um, you know, restrictive to the c pawn. Uh, knight c3 is great, but played after c4. Uh, otherwise, you're uh, you're basically um, getting the c2 pawn stuck on um, uh, this uh, you know this square for a while. Um, d5, e3, e6, knight f3, bishop b4. Um, it's just close to equality. Uh, you know, um, this knight on c3 is so inflexible that it probably leads to equality in most situations. Um, here, you're already, like I said, at equality. Um, e3 probably is, um, uh, I don't know, not that great. Um, pawn takes, c4, and, uh, yeah, um, uh, some aggressive plays by white. Uh, so let's go through this more slowly. I, I want to say avoid knight c3, you need your c2 pawn for attacking. Um, the opening lines here, uh, knight c3 is a distant fourth, uh, you know, I would go with c4 here c4 or knight c3 um d5 is weak uh you know this basically i'd go with bishop g5 sure but uh but e3 also is restrictive um i i think i'm seeing sort of a similar pattern which is uh you need moves that really advance your development with e3 basically um you know this this uh white dark squared pawn bishop gets a lot worse um, with knight f3, uh, you know, now you, you do have this idea of playing bishop d2, but this just isn't sort of the way that you wanted to play it. Um, I would play c4 here. Uh, you want to challenge the center. Um, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to think of an intuitive way to explain this, but basically um, in, the, uh, in the queen's pawn openings, you want to get control of the center uh, by playing moves like d4, c4, d5, c5. Um, uh, this needs to come before uh, before the knight plays to c3. Here, you know, white is basically crippled because he can't play um, c4 at any point. If he can't play c4 at any point, uh, the situation is pretty bad for him. Um, e3 also hems in the uh, the bishop on c1. A uh, better idea here is like bishop f4 uh, and then e3. Um, but uh, but I again, it's sort of tricky. I, I don't know how to intuitively explain it except for knowledge related to the queen's pawn game. Um, c4 followed by knight c3 is the correct way to develop the knight. Uh, bishop f4 followed by e3 is the correct way to develop the bishop. Uh, I want to come up with more general policies than that, but that's sort of uh, how I would best explain this. Um, yeah, uh, c4. 
ninety five, and I think you know I think basically black's black's better. Uh, the errors here for white included um, uh, the positional one that comes with locking in the bishop. Here, white is still fine. Um, c4, I think, is fine. But, uh, but bishop to d3 doesn't really do anything. Um, I would guess I would say pawn takes d5, and then um, bishop takes f1, rook takes f1, something like that. Uh, would lead to an interesting position for, for white. Um, but, uh, but bishop d3 doesn't add anything to this attack, and it becomes vulnerable to pawn takes c4. Uh, you know, bishop d3 is refuted by pawn takes c4. This is just better for black, a better continuation for black. Here, in terms of defending the pawn, I, I don't think you really can super effectively. Um, I think probably you just want to play pawn takes d5 or even c5 here. Uh, c5, bishop takes f1, c takes d5, bishop takes f1. Trade off the bishop. Uh, but I, I would advise against losing the pawn. Uh, you know, I'm also wondering, maybe you can play knight e5. I guess knight e5 is probably the most effective way to defend the c4 pawn. You need something to defend it. You definitely shouldn't lose it. Uh, so knight e5 is probably the best idea. Um, uh, and then I think um, this is pretty wild. Uh, the queen starts aggressively attacking you. Uh, black is a little better, but not uh, up by enough to justify such an aggressive attack. Um, on queen f3, now it looks like knight g4 could be played, as could f5. Um, knight g, uh, knight, uh, d knight to f6 looks good. Um, but f5, g3, knight to g5, and yeah, I think I would probably play queen takes a8, uh, takes e8. The issue here is just that uh, the knight to g4, knight to g5 is not a refutation of uh, of of the g3 move. Um, here, you know, basically the queen can take the rook, and the black queen will still be atta be getting attacked. So, you know, here the tactic, I think, you know, most people would see it as a two-move tactic is just queen takes a8, and then pawn takes uh, pawn takes h4, and uh, and here, um, you know, white's basically showing uh, rook up. Um, for not really any compensation. I guess white's king safety isn't fantastic, but you can just sort of ignore that. And uh, overall, um, you know, white's able to close out a win here. Interesting. Um, so d4, knight f6, uh, knight c3 isn't right. Um, e3 probably could be improved too. Uh, e3 just sort of locks in the bishop. I, I think it's good to defend the, the... I think e3 in general is a good move. But I would get the bishop out first. Um, the combination of knight c3, bishop f4 should be okay. Uh, but um, but you are going to have some weaknesses to things like c5 uh, going forward. Bishop f4 uh, is probably how I would do this. Pawn takes c4. Uh, overall, black's looking good um, and can play you know a reasonable game. Um, but then uh, but, but then black goes crazy with his uh, his attacking and tactics, and you can play g3. Um, and then knight g5 just blunders a rook. Uh, so overall, interesting. It never really gets much closer than that uh, towards the end. Um, this ends up being pretty much a rough, you know, a rough game for uh, for um, black. Uh, but I still think uh, so. So in terms of improving this game, I guess I would say knight c3 is not correct. C4 or something that challenges the center is correct. Knight f3 could be playable here. Um, but this is because this f2 pawn is not as necessary to maintaining a strong center in a queen's pawn game um, as, uh, as knight to c3 is. Uh, so I'd play knight to f3 there. Uh, a3, pawn takes c3. c4, bishop a6, bishop d3. Uh, so, so in terms of moves that I, I think are not good, knight c3 is the first. And then um, bishop d3 seems inefficient here. Uh, bishop d3 just doesn't solve any problems. Um, knight e5 provides effective defense for the c4 pawn. Uh, bishop d3 just allows pawn takes c4 here. And, uh, and basically, um, uh, this, this pawn is threatening this bishop on d3. Uh, real problem. Um, uh, so so it's, it's inefficient because it's spending time, it's spending one tempo not solving a problem. Knight e5 would be better, knight d2 would be better, um, and even something, you know, straightforward and developing that loses the pawn, like bishop to b2 or bishop to d2, uh, would provide an improvement for white. Um, anyways, uh, with, um, 
bishop takes c4, knight takes c4, queen uh, g4, f5, g3, knight g5, just blunders a rook, and it's smooth sailing for white after that. Um, yeah, uh, good play. Makes sense. Um, I don't really know if there's that much, uh, you know, there's that much of an improvement for white to make here. Uh, it looks good. Uh, solid. Um, but so the move, the two moves that I would I would work uh, against here are basically um, I, the two moves that that I would I would redo. Knight c3 is a general principle. That op opening move I think is not good for your c pawns. Not terrible, but not good. Um, and then here, you know, bishop d3, uh, you know, c5, uh, c, c takes d5 is a more efficient way to deal with this problem. Um, bishop d3 just doesn't add much. Uh, you know, get hit, gets hit by pawn takes c4, and uh, and um, uh, white is good. Pawn takes c4, bishop e2, white is fine, uh, or or black is fine. Uh, so so fine. F I guess I would say you know your pawn's getting attacked. You don't want to lose the c4 pawn. Knight e5 is a more straightforward way to deal with it. Um. Here, uh, yeah, this none of this seems to work particularly well, um, and uh, yep, uh, white, yeah, white just generally wins. Uh, it's solid, solid game. So on g three, knight g five is a blunder. Queen takes a eight, wins a rook. Uh, game sort of ends. Uh, so, anyways, interesting game. Uh, I think white's pretty accurate after that. Uh, maybe there's an inaccuracy or two, but, um, you know, uh, black hangs his rook shortly enough after that that I think, uh, I think the only two moves that, um, I would correct for white are, uh, are knight to c3, um, which traps the c2 pawn in. And uh, and bishop d3, which doesn't prevent knight take doesn't prevent pawn take c4. Uh, you need like knight knight e5 to uh, to defend uh, pawn takes uh, c4. Uh, so overall, good, uh, very good game, uh, very interesting, um, and uh, good tactic, good winning tactic, opening up the king side or opening up uh, or basically using the tempo to play queen takes a8 um, while uh, while the g3 pawn is threatening the queen. Um, solid way to win, solid idea. Uh, and uh, and yeah, good stuff for White, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, just some slight inefficiencies, um, and I appreciate you sending the game. Uh, but uh, but with those, I think um, you know White could have uh, attacked more efficiently. Still, what White did was great. Uh, I like this tactic at the end. Uh, queening into checkmate is always awesome. Nice nicely done. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, good stuff. Really interesting. Thank you very much for sending that, Pravilo. Um, please keep sending games. Super interested in seeing uh, kind of what what you're thinking about and and how to uh, uh, how to best um, you know uh, how to best advise you in terms of improving. Uh, but um, but yeah, overall uh, very interesting games. Thank you very much for participating in the stream. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, and then the last game is from A takes uh, A takes his game. Um, A takes is playing as black. Uh, we'll take a look at this here. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, looks like the Italian game, bishop c4, bishop c5, this is an opening I know well, uh, d3, knight f6, knight c3, um, and, uh, and here I would play d6, uh, I think d6 or castles, uh, the engine is suggesting castles, but I would play d6 here, uh, you know, basically, you know, the idea of this opening is, uh, is attacking the, you know, basically it, it's both sides are attacking on the king side, and who wins is the one who can formulate the attack on the king side more effectively. I think the way to do this is d6, bishop g4, but um, but overall, uh, with d6, bishop g4, I think black should be able to get his shots in first. Uh, so I'd play d6, castles, bishop g4, and uh, you know make white chase you with h3, g4, but overall black, uh, I think, has the better of it in this situation. Um, Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c5. Knight g4 seems overly aggressive to me. Uh, you know, white can play d4. Uh, it does make d3 sort of inefficient. Uh, bishop e3 can't be played, but I think white can just castle. 
Um, and it does look awkward to castle here, uh, you know, with the knight already sort of attacking on um, on g4. But uh, but I don't really think that white has kind of the maneuvering ability to uh, to get into or or black, white has uh, basically black I don't think has the maneuvering ability to get in if white plays something like h3. Here d6, h3, h5. H5 makes sense. I think um, uh, you know h5 defends the knight. It, it gives gives that standard uh, you know rook over. But let, let's see. So knight takes h xg4 is this actually still good for black uh i guess no so so i like um h5 as a general concept but i think it's not completely playable here uh here's the opening where i think you can play h5 uh, i'm just going to go through go back and create a whole new game um uh the opening where b where h5 is played is this one uh bishop b5 a6 um bishop b4 uh b5 bishop b3 bishop c5 castles d6 um uh knight c3 bishop g4 h3 h5 um in this in this case uh you know black can comfortably play um uh you know h takes g4 h takes g4 uh and then threats on uh threats queen to h4 uh that seems like a better play for black here hey what's up kiro how are you uh nice to see you here um but yeah, so so uh, so. Anyways, uh, this is not a situation where h5 can be played. Uh, you know, it's basically based on. Um, or sorry, th this one is a place. But here's a situation where h5 can't be played. Um, once this bishop is can defend the knight on g5, uh, you know, you basically can't play uh, queen over to the. You you can play uh, knight to g5, and the queen can't play over to the h file anymore. Uh, with h5. Um, uh okay bishop to g bishop to g5 f6 pawn takes um rook h5 and uh, and queen h4 and i think basically black is solid uh there's not really much here or i, I don't think i don't think there's much here for white um so so the basic point of this game is um i, I this this knight to g this h5 move was not sound white basically treats this as sound without ever actually calculating okay knight takes pawn takes knight g5 and uh and basically white is better uh if he'd calculated this he probably wouldn't have played um he probably wouldn't have played bishop to g5 uh, instead he gives you credit for an attack that you don't soundly have you play f6 pawn takes g5 and here like queen h4 uh and uh and basically um black is uh uh better um so you know it's kind of an interesting situation. Uh, you know, um, White should have calculated this out, uh, should have seen the knight g5 move, and not let this end up going through. Uh, with this in mind, um, I think that basically, you know, I think that the uh, pawn takes g4 becomes a lot clearer for White. Uh, f6 is better, or f6 basically makes black better here. Uh, they trade off the pieces, and black is good with a very open uh, uh, kingside. And uh, and then just white's totally busted. Um, so interesting overall situation. Uh, you know, white made the decision that h takes g4 was deadly, um, and then uh, played it anyways. A move later. So you know, overall, just a lot of tactical, uh, a lot of tactical um, steps here. Uh, and, um, I don't know. I don't know what you do. Uh, black, uh, basically just sort of, uh, you know, sort of wins. Um, in terms of improving Black's game, uh, I think your Italian game is, is fine. I don't think you need to play Knight G4. This is just hyper-aggressive way to do things. Uh, I'd pl probably play D6. Um, in terms of the opening book, uh, D6 is the most common. I play d6. D6 is solid. You know, realistically, I don't think it um, impacts your ability to attack uh, White's kingside too negatively. Uh, I think d6, bishop g4 on the next move, and you're in good shape. If uh, if h3 on the next move, h6, then g5, then g4. Uh, you do definitely want to attack aggressively on the king side, um, but this uh, this knight g4 I don't think is the structure, the most efficient structure to do it with. Uh, I think you play d6, get the bishop to g4, and you're in a good place. Um, so yeah, so d6 is, is uh, an improvement that I see for black. This line, the lines relating to this, th this I think is a better way to go. 
Um, you'll have uh, the ability, you know, provided that the, the bishop may play to b5, he, he might, and stop knight to d4. Um, but he might not, so then in that case you can play knight to d4 and, and try to double this uh, this uh, f-pawn. Um, this should be good for black, uh, should overall be solid. Um, so uh, so that's the line that I would recommend out of this opening. Uh, d6, castles, bishop g4, I, I like this better. Uh, knight g4 is, is, is just sort of wild. Uh, you know, you can play knight takes f2 here, it looks like the engine, or it looks like the opening book does. Um, uh, I doubt the engine does, though. Uh, here, you know, straightforward moves are what are evaluated as the engine by the engine as the best. There probably are some knight takes f2 sacrifices. I mean, this, you know, this in the opening book looks, I don't know, probably just worse. Uh, black basically loses two pieces to a rook, and that's sort of not the best idea. Um, but, yeah, uh, here instead, d6. d6, and I think black's good. Um, sorry, I just read your comment, Kiro. I'm sorry that uh, that you're having those difficulties. That uh, that blows. Uh, sorry, sorry that uh, that um, that that's happening to you. I hope I uh, hope you feel better. Uh, I didn't understand exactly what you were saying, uh, but um, but I just read that comment, so I really do hope you feel better. D six here. Queen takes h5 and threats on the rook file. Uh, in terms of improving this game, I think the knight g4 threat in general is probably a little flimsy. Um, but it worked out great for you, so, um, so uh, yeah. Uh, queen takes h5. If, if, uh, if white gives you credit for having a mating threat on pawn takes g4, then plays pawn takes g4 anyways. Um, that, uh, that tends to play out pretty badly. Um, yeah, sorry about that, Kiro. Uh, that is unfortunate. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so anyways, um, but yeah, that is, that is rough, uh, Kiro. I, I appreciate you taking the time to watch, um, uh, to watch this stream. Uh, I hope I, I hope I can provide some type of, um, uh, utility that makes you feel a bit better. Yep. Not too much in this game, to be completely honest. Uh, looks like about 12 moves, and uh, and all of them sort of favor black. Um, it's been a quiet night. We had a few that we were just really able to breeze through. I, I feel a little worried that I didn't give uh, didn't give complete uh, analysis to them. Um, I guess we can go back to to uh, Abdu versus Goxel's game, uh, just to uh, just to square it up. Um, So yeah, so this was a different game. We already went over this once, but uh, but I just wanted to give it its full time since we're way ahead of schedule. It's rare that we're actually way ahead of schedule. We got a bunch of miniatures in a row, so that was uh, that was helpful, I think. Um, uh, let's take this from Black's perspective because I'm pretty sure that Black sent this game. Um, uh, here I'd play c6 or knight f6. I think those are better strategic responses to, uh, to knight c3. Knight c3 causes the c2 pawn to get locked in. Um, And uh, yeah, made, made on move 15. I mean, how much can we improve this? Uh, but I don't know. I, I bet there is still a little bit of imprecision here. Uh, getting this knight posted on d4 seems like a pretty smart idea. Uh, that definitely seems good. And uh, yeah, uh, knight to e4, I guess the best response I, I would figure is knight takes, maybe knight takes d4 here. Or, uh, or maybe knight takes e4. But bishop g2 so saves the, the king the most immediately. Uh, this puts pressure on the, G on the e4 pawn, and, uh, and then basically uh, white is solid. 
Uh, overall, man, we breezed through tonight. Uh, these games were very short. Uh, nope, not deterring anyone from playing short games, but uh, but this was um, uh, sort of uh, uh, basically um, this uh, you know th this basically very quick. Uh, these quick games lead to quick analysis, I guess. You know, if you're mating on move 15, how inefficient could your moves have been? Um, but yeah, overall, thank you very much for uh, for sending the game, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys uh, spending the time on the stream. I um, hope this is helpful, and uh, overall, um, uh, yeah, thank you very much for sending the games. I, I think we're going to wrap up early tonight, um, and uh, feel free to send more. Um, thanks a lot. This is a miniature session. Yeah, I guess it is. Um, yeah, thank you very much for sending it, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Thanks. Bye.